So what we've done here with Codica is created a, a prototype of the project. Just we needed to download a copy of this code to work with. Um, I did download it and it's on my flash drive. Again, I'll put a copy of my work at, in the folder, in the network folder, at the end of the day, but you can continue to work on your project or you can take a copy of my project when I'm done with it. So, uh, on my flash drive, I've got the my SDCE folder, and in it, it made a my a, made a mobile website folder, which is actually a little time saver for us because as I showed up here on the board, we're gonna first a user is first gonna go to the main desktop version. JavaScript is gonna detect, oh, you're on mobile. Let's send you to the mobile version, and the mobile version exists in its own folder, and that's exactly what it gave us here. So that's a time saver. If they didn't give you like this, that's okay. We'll do it a little later. But if you look inside of that mobile website, we've got three files. index.html, codica.external.js, JavaScript, and codica.external.css. So the main structure of the project is in the HTML file. The, the colors the user interface, the look and feel of it is in the CSS file. That's what will store all our colors and alignments and so forth. And then the interactivity is in the JavaScript file. The JavaScript file will include the logic, the ability to capture the person's name and do other dynamic things. So that's very standard right there. Those three files, those three codes, those three technologies. Question? My files came up without the .js and .css. That just means most likely that your Windows computer has an option somewhere here that says do not show extensions. But uh, do you see perhaps on the column here, mine says type cascading, type JavaScript, type web. As long as you see that, you're fine. So w during the break, we'll look at it, but there's a spot in there to turn those extensions back on. Yes. Theoretically, can't you just do this for all eight or nine hundred pages on your app? You could. Merge the HTML you could, but that's I feel a little too cumbersome, because what's going to happen is we're going to do this as an SPA. Remember, everything in one file. So you could design every screen in Codica, download it all, and then copy those pieces into your main index file. But I sort of think it's a lot of extra work creating extra download files to then merge it into one. This is another way to do it. I put all of the pieces in one file, and then I need to separate them into screens. So either way could work. Maybe the way you're saying in, for you would be faster. Give it a try, and, and it might work out for you. We're just going to do it one possible way. So these are the three pillars of our project, HTML, JavaScript, CSS. We want to edit the index file, so once you see it here, you want to right-click it, edit with Notepad++. If you don't see edit with Notepad++, that probably means you're still looking at it in the zip file. You haven't extracted it. You're going to need to extract them in order to edit them. So edit with Notepad++, the HTML file. You may get a notification of a new update. Don't update it. Because remember, if you change anything on our computers, it goes back to factory settings. Even though we're editing something useful, don't update it. We've got our editor here, like we've seen before. I'm going to dissect and break down everything that we've got here in just a moment. But I want to do a quick digression here. Um, so uh, when I asked on the first day how many of you have experience in, in programming and coding and such, a lot of you raise your hands. And so what we've got here is Notepad++, our code editor. It's very lightweight. It's not as powerful as Eclipse or maybe something more modern also like Brackets or Sublime Text or uh, what are other hot ones? Um, what are the hot ones? Well, any of these new ones. Um, but you can fully customize it and make it your own and make macros and all of that cool stuff. But I want to show you some something here that might be useful to you. We've got the default Notepad++ color scheme. And this is useful to tell you if you click on a tag, where's its pair, and 
things get color coded in different ways for you to quickly see at a glance this is this tag and this is this property and this is JavaScript this is a comment etc we can change this because to be looking at a code editor with a white background is actually hard on your eyes a white background on a computer screen is not the same as a white background on text this is reflective color this is not as bright and doesn't hurt your eyes as much as these photons of light going directly into your eyes for eight hours a day as you're coding. So what many modern coders, uh, coding apps do is they actually go with a darker color scheme because it's easier on the eyes. Let me show you how to do that in Notepad. This is totally optional, but it's a nice thing to know. Go up to the settings at the top menu. Select Style Configurator. I don't think configurator is a real word, but we can go to it, style configurator. And here we've got style, select theme, default. I can select Bespin, and notice, look at that. I think that's a little easier on the eyes. It doesn't look that good on my monitor here, so I'm not going to use that color. But uh, what else? We've got khaki, khaki. So that one... Uh, looks okay. okay we've got Navajo we've got Twilight although I don't see Edward Cullen anyway um, we've got vibrant ink we've got Vim dark blue so we can get a classic type of terminal colors so any of these that you like you can use some are easier on the eyes than others but I do have to say, if you're going to be a serious programmer, you've got to select Hello Kitty. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I personally like to use Bespin. I think that's a good color combination. It's not, uh, it's got great color contrasts. Not so good on my projector, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use the default one. I think that looks best on the projector. Although, again, I would not be staring at this for a six-hour coding session. On your own computer, you can change it to whatever colors you want. And then, of course, you can customize it even more by selecting, maybe starting with Navajo, and then going in and saying the... The, the bad brace color is going to be a bright red. So you can go in and make it super customized. So I'm going to stay with the default. And once you find something you like, click Save and Close. And now you'll have your customized interface. And the, the point of that, it's, it's not just uh, a little fun customization. The point of that is if you are staring at a screen for a long time with a bright white background, like the default is, you're going to get fatigued more much sooner, and your coding might suffer for that. So if you, if you want to change that, you can. I'm keeping it on the default because it looks the best on my monitor. Hmm, text wrangler. Um, I haven't looked it up very recently. Try to go maybe up to your little Apple icon and see if there's a setting in there. Often they hide the setting there. See, maybe in there. So I'm going to break down what note what uh, Kodika gave us. We've got the doc type at the top. Notice one little difference is this has got the doc type in all caps. Technically, that's not wrong, but the specification of HTML5 does seem to recommend everything lowercase. So if you don't change this, you'll be fine. If you change it lowercase, you'll be fine. I'm going to change it to lowercase, just to be consistent with what I've talked about before. So on line one, I'll just put that lowercase. We've got the HTML tags, head tag, meta tag, there's car set written for us. We've got some new meta tags we haven't, uh, one of them we, we talked about and, and uh, two we haven't yet. Meta viewport, there's the initial scale and user scalable no. We saw that before. 
Remember, that'll zoom us in to 100%, 1 or 1.0, 1 and it will disallow the zooming in and zooming out. It's got two items here that for the that later on will be superfluous, but for the moment we've got meta name Apple Mobile Web App Capable and Apple Mobile Web App Status Bar Style. One, one says yes, one says black. What this is saying is if someone visits your web app on their uh, iPhone or iOS device, it'll look slightly different. It'll look slightly customized for them, more like a native app in that they won't have a the the, the usual uh, status bar at the top of your iPhone. Well, obviously, if you're on an Android phone, you, this won't affect it because it's not an Apple phone. It's not an Apple mobile status bar. So for the moment, I'm going to leave these, but later on when we get to the to making this the, the Android project, we're going to remove it. You could if you want to now, but I'm going to leave it because this is still going to be a mobile project by the end of this course. There's no title that was marked here because this will sort of auto fill itself depending on the first uh, header text here. Notice I, we left this as header and that's what it wrote in the title for us. And anyway, when this becomes an app, eventually there will be no need for the title tag anyway. We're never going to see it in, an, in the app. We're going to have a header. So this doesn't have anything for the title. That's fine. We've got a link to a style sheet. Blah, 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 blah. jQuery Mobile 1.3.1. Does anyone remember from a long time ago last week what version we were using? 1.4.5. Don't change it, just make a note of it. This is pointing also to a different site. It's not pointing to jQuery.com, it's pointing to cloudfront.net. So there's multiple websites that store these resources. These are known as CDNs, Content Delivery Networks. This is a CDN. content delivery network. The point of that is that if there was only one website in the world that stored the jQuery mobile files and if that server went down suddenly a lot of projects lost an important resource. So a content delivery network is a website, a server that provides these commonly used files globally. So another one is cloudfront.net Notice I wrote a comment here. Remember how to write the comment? So FYI, that's a CDN. It's a content delivery network and it just means a server basically that is holding on to resources for other websites to use. So that's linking over to the, code, uh, to the jQuery mobile CSS file. Next comes line 15. Uh, another reference to another style sheet, Kodika External CSS. Actually, I'm not sure if it's external or extra. Both would work. Kodika.extra.css. Remember, that file is in that folder right there. We'll look at it a little later. It's pointing to an external CSS file. Then we've got references to jQuery and another jQuery mobile JavaScript. Again, old versions. We're going to update those versions in a bit. And then we've got Kodika Extra Features. This one I thought was a little weird. It's pointing over the, to Kodika.extra.js, which is right there on the folder, but technically it's pointing to the CDN version. It's pointing to the version on their server. So I don't know why they have the one in the folder that they gave us, and yet they're still pointing to connecting to the one on their server. So we'll deal with that later head, body, they made a, a comment here for home, div, data roll page. So we're going to have to take a moment to update these in, in a bit. We're not going to use divs. Divs are the catch-all generic containers. We want to use the correct tags in a moment. 
If this has got data role of page ID page one, we'll fix that. That should have meaningful names there. Once you've got seven pages, what does page six mean? As opposed to ID equals contact. So we'll fix that. Div data theme data role header. We'll need to fix that. Data position fixed. This is odd. They use H3 instead of what I said to use up on the header. What did I say to use instead? H1. We'll fix that in a bit. We didn't get to this one last time. Div data role navbar. And then that's a collection of the links. The home link, the art link, the computers link. Again, I'll break it down further in a little bit. That's a div that starts on line 32 and goes over to 51. Div data role content, that'll need to be fixed. H2, that's fine. Div style, blah, blah, blah. Image, this is an image. Just a placeholder image on their server, codica.com, with a little bit of CSS. Div data role collapsible set. That's how the collapsible component works. Um, so we'll be changing all the divs to sections, is that right? Not every div to section, but a few of them, yes. But all the ones that say data role will be turned to section to bootstrap. Is that, I'm just trying to make sure I know that it's there. Well, yes and no, but data role content, for example, is going to be article. Remember, we use right. section, we use article, and other ones? But the point is, yeah, we're going to not use the generic div, we're going to use the correct tag when we get to, to it. I believe there's one for, for collapsible set. I'm blanking on what it is at the moment. I'll have to look it up. But that's made up this way. Divs. I'm not saying divs are bad. I'm just saying always use the right tag for the right task. We might, we might keep div for collapsible set. I'll have to look that one up. I'm blanking on it going on. Then we've got data role list view. And this one's one of this one's the odd duck. It doesn't use a div for some reason. It uses a bullet point list, which I haven't talked about yet, but that's bullet points. Uh, don't worry about that. Data role list view and notice how that's made up. This is the point. Kodika wrote the code for us. We can then read the code, understand the code, and change the code for free. Because you'd have to get the $79 license or you'd have to do the seven day trial and then figure out how to get seven more days and all of that. So we're going to use the free version. It's got a few limitations here and there, but it did still a lot of work for us. Is the UL and LA the standard HTML? Is the what? The UL and LA the standard HTML? Those are, those are standard HTML 1.0 tags. Yes, these have been around a while. And these are a way to make bullet points. So this is pretty clever because in theory, this is just bullet points. UL means unordered list. Uh, the opposite is an OL, ordered list, which is number one, number two, number three. These are just bullet points. But with data role list view, then it elevates them into this, into this list view widget, this, this here with the divider and the buttons. But that's standard HTML, UL and LI. So that goes on a bit. Here's the grid. I almost forgot about it because I don't really see it. I don't really see it here because it's invisible. It's down here. But the collapsible element, this is also a div and it looks kind of weird, but it's this is two rows, two columns. As we use it a little later, we'll, I'll explain the details. What is UI block? Is there a block C? There is, but we'll get to it. And then div data theme A. I'll explain that later. Data role footer, data position fixed, and then heading three, wrong one. And then the div ends. This is why we don't want to use generic divs, because what div ends? Well, that's the section or the whole screen of home. That's why we're going to take time in a moment to use the correct HTML5 tags. And then the document ends.
you don't have to do this, but I'll show you that over on the Codica ext CSS file, we can edit that in Notepad as well. It just says put your custom CSS here. This is where we're going to write our code to change the color of these things because right now the color maybe looks nice, but it's boring. Or worse, it's not the color of my company. So we're going to put our custom CSS here to edit the colors later. And very similar to this Codica Extra JS file, just another placeholder. Put your custom code here. This is where we're going to write our JavaScript when we get to that in a week or two uh, for more complex interactions. And that, in general, is what Codica did for us. It didn't make our app for us. We didn't cheat. We're just at a starting point where some things are done for us. We can get to the good stuff. Any questions so far? Okay, what we're going to do is... Let's take a moment to, very at the beginning, uh, update the divs to the correct tags. So let's start with line 27. So make a note here. Line 27 and, all the way down here, line 111. 27 and 111 for me. Your line numbers hopefully are the same, but if they're not, the very last div next to the body. That div closes the first div way at the top. That's why I made a note of it, because on line 27, we're going to change div to section. So it's not a div anymore, it's a section, and we have to then do a counterpart way down there on line 111. Slash section. Obviously, we're not writing the new tag. We're replacing the wrong one. Then line 28 to 52 is my section for, or my block for the header and that is the tag header. So on line 28, I'm updating that to header. And then line 52, it should be the one, if you're, if you're disoriented, it should be the one near data roll content. Header ends, content begins, slash div, change that to slash header. If you're on the right track, remember, Notepad will tell you if you click on a tag, where's its pair. If you edit one of these, you know, I click on header, uh, where's its pair? It does not highlight, because I haven't written it yet. After I write it, then it'll say, there's the pair. Uh, data theme A. What we're going to do is we're actually going to, at the moment, remove these references to data theme A. I'm, on, I'm still on line 28 in the header data theme A. What this is about is in older versions of jQuery Mobile, because this is all jQuery Mobile stuff, data theme, data role, in older versions of jQuery Mobile, we had um, sort of these placeholders of built-in theme colors combinations. There was data theme A, B, C, D, E, and then F, the custom one. And so that, that was, um, you know, A, B, C, D, E, those were the five built-in ones, but those five color combinations were not enough for everyone that needed a color. So now they've just removed this for other other ways to do it. So we're going to remove data theme. Let's remove the whole property there. Data theme. Data role is good. Data position fix is good. Uh, oh, backing up here. One more thing. Section data role page ID. 
Again, page one is meaningless. What's a better name for this section, for this ID? Home. Home will work. Lowercase. Notice how almost all of the code that we're writing is lowercase. That's HTML5 standards compliant. So now the section has a meaningful ID. When we have seven more sections, they will have a meaningful name. Let's change header text in a moment, but the header, the heading tag, h1, to lines 29 and 31, h1, h1. Instead of saying generically header, that's the text that appears on screen, we'll, we'll call this the name of, uh, of our app, which is my STCE. You can spell it however you want. So one we didn't talk about last time, the navbar, if we look it up on uh, jQueryMobile.com, we have the ability to create navigation elements, navbars. We saw it was just drag and drop in Codica, but what's happening behind the scenes is we've got a div that has been set to a data role of navbar. That's jQuery mobile. All these data somethings are jQuery mobile. We have an HTML5 tag that was invented for navbars. So line 32 to 51 is going to be the tag, the HTML5 tag, nav, N-A-V. Then of course slash nav on line 51. Nav. You start the nav and you close the nav. And what this is doing is it's taking uh, bullet points. UL means unordered list. It's a it's standard HTML. An unordered list is bullet points. So UL slash UL. And each list item, li, each bullet point is an li. And each bullet point is the link, there's a, href, blah, 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 home, another list item with another link of art, and so forth. And notice the links are all pointing to pound page one. We're not going to have any page one, are we? The home button is going to link to the pound home link. Make sure you've got a, the pound there. We don't have an art page yet, an art section yet. We're going to get there, but we, we know what we're going to do. So let's change the art link to pound art, and then the computers screen to pound computers, or pound PC if you want to save some typing, save time typing, art. PC. And again, make sure you don't remove the pound symbols. When we come back a little later to animate our project, we would come back here. Data dash transition. It has the default of oh this one on mine I I accidentally put none, but yours should all say fade. We'll look up what the other ones are. There's some really cool ones, like you can flip the screen, you can make it swoop in. We'll see those later. We don't have any screens to link to yet to see it in action, but I'm just telling you that data transition is how you animate from screen to screen. These have data theme and they're empty. And they're not useful actually, so let's remove them. 
to remove the whole data theme attribute for each of the links. data icon. Those are the icons that we selected inside of Kodika, but actually because that version of Kodika that we were using was using uh, jQuery Mobile 1.3, it, it didn't have in the list, it didn't have the list of all 40 icons in the new Kodika, the new jQuery Mobile 1.4. So, but no problem. We didn't have that option in Kodika, but we know that we can type in other ones that are not available, such as, you know, Instead of star, we can do user. You can do that if you want. But that's, uh, that's user. And notice the home button has an extra, an extra property that the others don't. Class equals, in quotes, UI-BTN-Active and UI-State-Persist. Now those two things are coming from jQuery, uh, either jQuery or jQuery Mobile, but those two are what make the home button active. Notice, notice the home button is, is already highlighted. And this is what I said about user interface. If I'm on the home screen, the home button should be highlighted to let people know you're on the home screen. Later on when we work with the art screen or the computer screen, then we'll make those highlighted. But the way it's working is with this class. So we'll, we'll work with that later. There's home and art. Okay, so the nav is done. Scroll down, slash header, then another div starts, data roll content. That's line 53, all the way down to 105. And uh, what HTML5 tag do we use again for our main content? Article. article, yes. Article. So change those two lines, article slash article, data roll content. So we down on line 105 or so, we have slash article. We've got heading 2. Let's leave that as heading for the moment because this will be a good placeholder. One weird thing that I, I see that Kodika prototype gives us is it gives us a placeholder image and then it wraps a div around it and gives it some weird style. When we use the, when we write when we add our own image, for some reason it it puts the image like slightly outside of this box, like a weird effect. I don't think it's that useful. So actually we're gonna remove this. We're gonna remove the whole div pair. Line 57 and 59, remove the whole line of div, not just the word div, the whole line of div, and also slash div. It's actually not as useful as it seems. How do I know that? I've taught this class a few years. I know. It's not useful. Okay. I have a quick question. On line 1 and 105 of article, is that the same thing that we line 2 Let's see here, line 10, you said 101? 
maybe our, our, our line numbers are a little different, but what I'm seeing on 101, slash div, can it uh, right away closes the starting div. So these divs right here, this is, this is why it's a good idea. Click on the div or click on the tag, and it'll show you where it starts. So if you just eyeball it, you don't know where does it start. So click on it, and hopefully it highlights its pair. All right, so the I took out the div for the image. Then we have div data roll collapsible set. All of this is fine for the moment. Don't worry. So don't worry about that div collapsible set. <laughs> then we've got div data roll list view. That one's fine for the moment. Mine still says divider and button, but we'll edit that properly a little later. So I'll skip this whole section of UL list view. Or uh, actually, one thing I want to remove right here: div uh, div data divider theme B. Again, that's sort of a uh, not not quite modern. So somewhere around line seventy-seven, where I've got the UL data role list view, I've got data divider theme. Remove that. Exactly. Just the property data divider theme B. So I'm going to take that out. We have some other things I'm going to talk about later once we actually use this component. But I, I cut out that, uh, that old theme code. So let's see, keep scrolling down. Uh, out of the corner of my eye, I see something called data transition slide. It's using a different animation. I don't know what it looks like yet, but it is cool. Keep going. Div uh, class grid. Um, leave that alone for the moment. Then eventually you should get to about line 106, where it's another div. This one's an important one. Div data roll footer. So change that one to the HTML5 tag footer. Lines 106 and 110. And then, of course, we'll remove the data theme there. Data theme is not useful. We'll remove that. And lastly, what do we use as our heading when we're in the footer? That might be the text, yes, but which particular heading? Nope, H2 is going to be in the body. Nope. Nope, H1 is at the very top. H1, 2, 3, 4. H4. Because we'll have H1 as the very top heading. We might have a heading 2 and 3 within the content. If you need even more, you can, but then H4 is the very last one. So if you have H1 for the heading and you need H1, 2, and 3 for the body, fine. And then you'll make H, uh, H, H5 footer, or H6 as necessary, but that's kind of a lot of divisions. H1 through 4 usually is, is what you need. Save that. If you haven't been saving, you should remember to get in the habit of saving every once in a while. I might not mention it every time, because what if there was a power outage? We might have lost all of this work, so you might remember to keep saving. And I want to see the result. So you want to run Firefox. What I've got here is just sort of a very generic template of the possibilities of what I can work with in my project. I did notice something. You may or may not have noticed this. My art 
doesn't have the little man there as a plus sign. And that's because we don't have jQuery Mobile 1.4. We've got 1.3. <clears throat> but don't worry about it yet. Anyway, there's our project at this moment. What I want to do, and then that'll take us to the end of the lecture for lab, is I want to create these different screens. I, I, if I click on art screen, either nothing will happen or you'll get an error, because those screens don't exist yet. The links are, are ready to go, but the pages don't exist yet. The screens don't exist yet. So um, there are several ways to do it, of course. But the way we're going to do it is, well, we've already got sort of like the placeholder code. We're going to copy and paste to create new screens. What I mean is we've got section, and we've got header, and we've got article, and we've got footer, all of that. We've, we've got it all. Plus we've got the, the nav and everything. So let me show you. I'll do it, then we'll do it. I, I would just simply select all of that from section to slash section. Copy and paste right after it. And what that did is it created a brand new section. A brand new section that I just have to give a new ID, art. And now I have an art screen with all of the pieces. Too many pieces, but all of the pieces. That's the concept. That's what we'll do, I, I think. That'll work well. So let me back up and then we'll do it together. All right. So what I'm saying is from section to section, which is line 27 to 111. From section to section, select everything. Uh, we'll do the we'll do the comment too, actually. So 26. We'll go from the comment and section all the way down all the way down to section. Don't get the body. From the comment all the way to the ending of the section. And then right click to copy. Right click copy. And then press enter after section. So this is the section of home. I've just copied it all completely. I'm going to then paste. Right click paste. And that made an exact copy, of course, of the section. We'll need to back up to back to line 112. Change your comment to show this is now the art screen. It's just a comment. And then make the more important change, ID equals art. You can only use one name per the ID. You cannot use ID home three times. It just will not work. It's not legitimate. Each section needs to have its own ID, its own unique ID. So we'll switch that over to the comment will say art, and the ID will say art, lowercase. And now if you save it and run it, just to make sure it's working so far, this is my home screen. I click on art. This is my art screen. How can I tell? The only way I can tell is up on the address bar. I did go to the art screen. I did go to the home screen, art screen. If I click on computers, it doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. There's no page there yet. So both the home screen and the art screen look exactly the same. But at least I've got the, the structure, the foundational tags. We still need to massage it a little bit more. For example, 
If I'm on the art screen, I want the art button highlighted, just like the home button is highlighted. And maybe I want it to also display content related to the art screen. So the there's a section. It's got a page. It's art. Uh, my SDCE. We've got the nav bar. We've got home. We've got art. Remember I said earlier the reason that the home screen stays highlighted is because it's got this class. Well, the art is going to need that class. So we're going to in this case cut and paste not copy and paste cut and paste or or move let me show you first because it is this is always confusing for people um, if you were to simply select this class from home and cut it don't do this yet and then you were to simply paste it right above art like that you would think that would work no, no what Exactly. This angle bracket closed that starting angle bracket on A. And this one closed here because it started here. So we have here this weird closing tag of a tag that's not closed. Notice also the color change. Wasn't this color coded a moment ago? Mm -hmm. That's one of Notepad++ ways to tell you, wait a minute, something's wrong. So what should happen here, I'm going to take it back. Now do you see it's color coded? This angle bracket here, we don't want to take that angle bracket. We want to move that angle bracket down. So what I would do is at the end of line 127, before the end of that angle bracket, enter. Now that end looks like that end. And then now I can cut that line except for the angle bracket and put it at that angle bracket. So I'm selecting that whole class, but not the angle bracket. Cut, move it here, paste, color coded. And there's the angle bracket here, closing that one instead of there, just like that. Now if I save it and run it, and I go from the home screen to the art screen, the art button should be highlighted because we've told it, activate and keep it persistent. Make it make it blue, make it uh, active, and then keep it that color when I move my mouse away. Persist. So just to confirm, here I'm on the home screen, click on art, art screen is highlighted. That's what that class is doing. So you had some details here and there, but this is the thing. Um, you have to be precise when you're coding, because even though you watch Terminator Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 9, you watch all of these movies where the computers are going to take over the world. Computers are dumb. They don't know when this angle bracket is needed and not. Computers need to be programmed to do what they need to do. And yes, maybe in the future they'll be able to think on their own, but this is not smart enough to know what we mean. So we have to tell it what we want. We have to program it. We have to code it. And we have to be precise. That's why sometimes people get frustrated with coding. You try to learn some coding or scripting language and it doesn't work and you give up because you now have to think like a computer and a computer is dumb. It has to be very specific. So I'm involved in classes that are for web design and apps and whatever that are very... Uh, you know, visual, and then those students go to the brainy part, the technical part, and then they struggle because they're more of a, a visual, artistic person, and they go to coding and they struggle. Vice versa, you might all be more of the of the coder types, and then when we get to the artistic part later on, you're going to struggle because maybe that's not your forte. So here. I'm just saying that we need to think like a computer, be precise, tell it exactly what we want, and then it might do what we want. I'm going to scroll down further. Instead of this saying heading 
on line 142, I'll write art classes. So on screen now, not only will the button be highlighted in the art button, it'll also show some text, whatever I want, but here I'm saying art classes. This is a list of art classes. According to my example that I've wireframed and talked about, I'm not going to put an image on this one, on this screen, so we're going to remove the image tag completely. Line 145. We will use that collapsible. And we'll write what we need to write a little later. I'm still trying to build my structure. We do want the collapsible set, just like my example, but we don't want the list view uh, component. The list view component is going to serve us better in the computer's screen. So remove completely the whole UL, the whole list view, lines 164 to 181. There's still a copy of it back on the home section. So we're we're not losing it, really. Go ahead and delete that. We have that div. We're going to leave that div of the grid. We might need that later. We want to perhaps divide up the screen down there. So we'll leave that. And now if you save and run it, actually before we go, a uh, footer. Uh, we forgot to do it on page, on home page, but we'll put the copyright there. The divider? Yes, but unfortunately our line numbers might not add up exactly. What I had said was we had just deleted the, the, the list view, right? The list view. Mm-hmm. So my home screen is still cluttered with a bunch of elements that I don't need. That's fine. My art screen now is starting to take a little more shape. It's got the heading to art classes. It's got that collapsible widget, which we're going to populate later. It's got the invisible grid that we'll use later. We've got the footer. We're going to use the same sort of concept for computers. We're going to copy that home section again because it's complete. We're going to paste it to create a new section, ID equals PC, and then fix that to display the content of the PC screen. I'm going to back up again to line 26 to 111. <coughs> 26 to 111 to again copy a complete section which has a header and a footer and those components. I'm going to copy that doesn't matter the order at all, really. I could copy and paste it right below. But just in a logical order for me to find it next time, I'm going to paste it after the art section. I'm going to copy the, the home. I'm copying the home section one more time. And then I'm going to paste it after the art section. So I've got now another copy of that home section, which of course I need to change the comment, PC, ID, PC, and fix some of these things here, just like before. <coughs> Very important, of course, make sure the ID is unique there, or else if we don't change that and we're trying to click the home button 
and it takes us home and we click the computers button it'll also take us home or won't do anything because you've got conflicting IDs so header is fine h1 is fine navbar home art PC uh, that's where we need to do this trick again about class computers is the one that now needs to be highlighted so same thing we're going to push that angle bracket down computers and then move the class active persist down to computers so that computers is highlighted once we go to the computers screen so line 202 at the end angle bracket press enter to move it down and then we will cut and paste or you can drag and drop you can select class and just drag it down to the angle bracket line 212 still says heading what should that say computers the computer classes just to check if I'm on the right track I'm going to save and run there's home screen I need to change that it's no longer heading art screen says art classes and computers says computer classes and it's highlighted and then obviously I'll, I'll have to remove the section here um, collapsible and keep the list view. Oh, and then my footer. So in the computer classes, again, I don't need that image. Line 215. I don't need the collapsible, collapsible set. I'll keep the list view. Again, I'll keep the grid. It doesn't take up any space if I leave it. And my footer. So let's see how I'm doing. I'll save and I'll run home screen, art classes, computer classes. These buttons don't work yet. We'll deal with that later. The dividers haven't been fully set up either. We'll deal with that later. The art collapsible uh, components aren't working just yet or named. And then on the home screen, well, now I've got to go back to the home screen and work on that one. Heading is no longer meaningful here. I'm not going to use these elements here. And I've got to fix my footer on, on home. So what I would need to do is to go back to my home screen, my home section, line 55, my line 55 lists heading right at the top where article content starts. 
article content heading. Uh, what are we write here? Let's write um, a wealth of knowledge. No, a font of knowledge. Is it font or fount? Fount. Fount of knowledge. We're going to add a picture later, so right now nothing really shows up. And we're not going to need the data roles of collapsible set and list view on the home screen. And we'll keep again the, the grid because we can use that to fill, we can use it as, as placeholders later. It doesn't take up visual space. And finally, the footer. We're removing the collapsible set and the list view from the home screen. So that might have been a little bit tedious. If it was, no problem. Pay Kodika $79, and then you'll get the ability to do all of this right in the Kodika interface, make new screens, link them together, no problem. But then you'd be cheating yourself from learning more HTML, right? So we're doing it the hard way, really. Uh, but it's not that hard. Copy and paste and change it a little. And, and it is. If you're not that used to coding, it might have been hard because this is a big wall of code, big wall of text. But Notepad++ tries to help you with code highlighting and these you know, lines connecting each other to help you navigate your way in line numbers and all of that. So we managed, and if you didn't quite get it, that's okay. We're going to get to lab in about 15 minutes. And of course, I'm going to put my code in the network folder if you want a copy of it, just to compare my code with your code. We're not quite done yet, but hopefully we're on track. How many of you would you say that you ended up where I ended up with? Raise your hand. Okay, good. How many of you are like, you know, 50% of the way there up to where I got to? That's good. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, have, we'll have that lab time in a moment, but we'll, we've got one more thing to do, one more fun thing, then we'll wrap up. This is all, of course, fun, but one more funner thing. If we uh, notice, if we go from screen to screen, we get a very subtle fade animation. Let's take a moment to play with the other types of transitions. Let's do this. Let's go back to line 35. This is the nav bar of the home section. You've got the home button. Line 35 says data transition fade. That's that default fade animation. I'll show you the list of acceptable animations, but let's just try one here. Slide. S-L-I-D-E, lowercase, slide. I'm going to save it and run it. Oh, not on home. We're already on home. 
art, line 41. This works where we're going to. So slide on home. Doesn't do anything. We're already on home. Sorry about that. We're on home and we want to go to art. So the art button should have slide on the computers if you want. But I'm going to add the slide transition to the art button. And watch this. I'm going to click art. Slides over. I'm going to press back on the web browser. Slides back. I'm going to click art and go to, to here. And then I'm going to click computers. Boo. No slide. Well, I didn't click the home button. I clicked back. But right. notice that. OK, we'll check in a moment. So yes, you would have to go in and for each data transition, set it to the one that you're interested in. It doesn't automatically apply all the time. So that's a little annoying. Um, And so if I add the slide transition uh, to all of the ones on the section of home, then they, those will slide. But then I also need to add the slide transition to all of the counterparts on the art section and the PC section. Before we do that, let's play with another one. Instead of slide, try flip. Flip. So I set it to flip. I go to art. Flip. Press back on the browser. Flip. The reason I'm pressing back is because if I go to computers and then click home, it fades. Because the computers screen, the computer section, navbar, does not have transition equals flip. It still has fade. I'm pressing back on the browser. But we're not going to have a back button exactly as an app, so we, that would be something that needed to be fixed. I won't do it just yet, but I'm just showing you that we can do the flip transition. We've got another one. We've got a uh, turn and a couple more. So let me show you one of the ones that's the that's the weirdest, kind of most interesting one. It's a little over the top, I think. Let's just try this one. Then I'll show you the list of all possible ones. Uh, instead of flip, try this one. Flow. Based on its name, what do you think it'll do? Liquefy? Maybe. Like water flows? Maybe. Try it. Let's try flow. Flow looks like this. Watch this. Art. Whoa. Whoa. It's like I'm swiping it out of the way. Like I'm moving it with my finger and swiping it out of the way. Pretty extravagant. So I'm not just making these up. This is part of a list of the jQuery mobile possible transitions. So I'm going to take a quick segue over here to jQuerymobile.com. Let's take a look. What are the possible transitions? Let's go to jQuerymobile.com and then to the demos. And we are using an older version of, of jQuery Mobile. Yes, but don't worry about that. Uh, this, this will be fine. Go to the latest one, 1 1.4.5. So under Demos, and then jQuery 1.4.5. And then you'll see on the right side over here somewhere, Transitions. It's at the bottom. It's at the, last, the left side. couple places so you could see it under the pages and navigation box transitions mm -hmm. 
The jQuery mobile framework includes a set of CSS-based transition effects that can be applied to any page link or form submission with Ajax navigation. So we saw fade, flip, and flow. There's also pop, <coughs> and so forth. So here you can see what would it look like as a dialog pop-up box, and what would it look like as a whole page. So for example, pop works best as a dialog. Look at that. It popped into place, and then it unpops. If we do it for a whole page, it's kind of weird. The whole page did it. Take me back. Fade. We saw flow. Slide fade, slide up. Not that many animations, but um, these that are available are pretty useful. They're not too over the top, they're not too processor intensive. Except for flow, I think. And all you have to do is just use that keyword, turn or flip. So turn is like the whole page turns, the whole screen turns. And it says, note, some platforms currently have issues with transitions. We are working on a solution to solve the problem for everyone. If you are experiencing flickers and flashes during or at the end of a transition, we suggest the following workaround. And then it goes on there. So this, this works overall with most platforms, but when we get later to actually testing it on devices, then we'll figure out um, such as Android 2, devices with Android 2, which are pretty old, these won't really work, and Fade will be the best it, work, it can do. But that's okay, this is just icing on the cake. It's not important that the, anim that the animation happens to show the flip. The content is what's important, so if, if this doesn't work exactly on an older Android device, I'm not worried. My content still shows up. We can apply this globally at all links. Something about browser support, don't worry, fall back, max scroll and width, and other, other things. Creating custom transitions, that's complicated, but you would be able to make your own animations with different speeds and all of that, but that's complicated. Um, at the moment I'm just showing you that we have this ability to create an animation between screens, but this will not work if we are having, if we have our link, if we had here for example href equals pc.html. If we were going over to a completely different file, then the animations would not work. These animations only work as an SPA single page app. That's one of the reasons one of the many reasons why we're keeping all of our project as one file. So for animations. And again, but animations are the icing on the cake. They're not mission critical. So if you want to divide up your project into multiple files, that's fine. You won't have the animation, but not mission critical. A caveat about transitions is we have the ability I put all of these the same one all the time, but you can put one flow, you can put one pop, you can put one slide. You can do that. Should you do that? Not really. This goes against, again, user inter good, inter good user interface design. This is going to confuse and maybe even annoy your users. Why did this animation happen here? Does that mean something? Uh, this, look diff this animation looked different than that. Is this screen special? You're going to confuse people. You want to keep your transitions consistent and to a minimum, except when necessary. Like, if you have a pop-up dialog box, then it's okay to use the pop transition, because that's a different kind of screen to get your attention. You obviously use the pop-up for some reason, so the pop transition would make sense there. But just to make every button at the top navbar a different animation for animation's sake, not a good idea. That's bad user interface design user experience actually user experience so you could if you want to but I'm gonna keep these uh, I kinda like flip it works it's interesting it, it's not so over the top it's short so for me I'm gonna use flip and I do need to go to my other pages my other sections and also change those as we 
need to change more things at once later on. We'll talk about the, the, the simple but powerful find and replace feature. Because right now I can do this nine times, three, six, nine, not so bad. But if I've got 40 pages, I don't want to change it 40 times. But we'll see later. We can use find and replace. Find all instances of data transition equals fade and change them to data transition equals flip. And the computer, because it's good at doing repetitive things, will do it 39 times in a half of a half of a second instead of me going in to do it manually. But we'll, we'll do it together later. Find and replace. You can probably figure it out. But we'll do it together later. I'm going to change all my transitions to flip. Uh, except for the ones that are listed on the on the uh, list view. Those are set to slide. Don't worry about that yet. That might be a legitimate reason to have a different animation, and in our case it is, because it does display a different kind of content. The B screen. So it's okay to have a different transition there. Flip. So you can do this if you want. I've gone in and I've changed all of these to a flip animation. Again, this is, doesn't happen automatically. I went in and changed it nine times. Not so bad at this point, but if it's 40 times, we have better ways to do it. I'm going to wrap the main lecture in one minute, but any general questions on anything we talked about today? Yes? Uh, you have different H uh, tag sizes in both the header and the footer, but they render it as accurate. Is that for the internet and not the human eye? It is using the right tool for the right job, and then we can use CSS to then style it in a different way. So we have created a sound foundation using the right tags. Visually, it looks the same. But if we had used h1 at the top and h1 at the bottom, that is not a good foundation. It's the wrong tag for the wrong job. So it looks the same. We can style it differently with CSS a little later, but we use the right tag for the right job. So the internet is looking at the header as a more important element. So you're giving it a larger tag. Does that mean you might write job? more in the job as a meaning. Uh, let's say this was a website up online and then if Google found it, Google would then look at your headings and help analyze your page and then when someone searches for computer classes at San Diego Continuing, then it would possibly show up on a Google search better because we've used the right tag for the right job and Google saw those tags and can serve your page. So that's why we would, it's not which is better or more important, it's just that then the search engines can determine your, your, the, the, the content easier with the right tags. So what we did today was we used Codica to, cre to quickly create an interface. Then we took it into Notepad and continued to work on it. We're not going to use Codica much after this. That's why I said don't worry about the $79. We'll use the free one. We're done. If you are serious about making apps in the future, I do recommend uh, paying for that license. It's not so expensive. But I also recommend contacting Kodika.com and saying, I'm a student. Do you provide a discount? And I know they do. But you have to contact them. I don't know what the discount is for the student. I got one as an instructor. So you'll probably get one as a student too. And then you can make unlimited apps and actually link them together in Kodika without having to do this copy and paste that we did. But sometimes it's okay to do the hard way, the, uh, the long way, because it helps you reinforce concepts. So I'm going to make sure I've saved my work. It's on my flash drive. I'm going to put a copy of my work in the network folder. I'm going to have some lab time now. Make sure you signed in. And when we come back on Thursday, and when we come back on Thursday, we will continue our project. Can you say this one? Please, do I please?